So if you think about your customer base, or the universe of your customer, right? You got new customers, you think about your existing customers, and then you think about your advocates, the people who love you, who your customers who come back over and over again, who they tell everyone about your hotel. Um, they, they just feel like they're sort of part of your family and they want to help you succeed, right, your advocates. Well, if you really look at, and, and through the research from my last book, we looked at um, people who were the super engaged customers. This was back during the rise of social media. We were looking at online communities. Uh, and we looked at those people who were the most engaged. They created the most discussion threads. They were the most uh, engaged in the community. And it was only 1%. So it's not the 80-20 rule, but really the 1%. And it was a very small and surprising number. We looked at IBM and Intuit and all these communities. And it was just 1%, so a very surprising number. But this is what Gaga does. She has, what, 57 million likes on Facebook? She focuses on 1% of her fans. Most of her efforts on 1% of her fans, right? So one percenters, right? It's this uh, concept of looking at these folks who love you. And the reason why she's focused on them is because through word of mouth, they're going to get her new customers. These are the most influential. These are the people who go out, talk to other people, recruit them to your hotel. Right, and for her, recruiting them into the little monster fold. And so they're the ones who are growing her business. And she has said, you know, she wants to be around for the next 25 years. And so this is how she's going to do it. She's going to grow that loyal fan base over the years. I think a very, very smart strategy uh, for companies to embrace. So let me take you, uh, introduce you to a woman named Amber Brown. Maybe a, a one percenter for Gaga that you might not even think about. I think a lot of folks think that her fans are very young. This is Amber Brown. She lives in Southern Illinois. She's 38, right? She has been to, as you can see, there are nine Monster Balls. That was the first tour, nine of them. She told me she schedules her vacations around them. Um, the Born This Way Ball, she's been to five of those. And she was first in line at the St. Louis Ball, which means she got to go backstage and meet Gaga. She actually, uh, she told me she slept out for a week to be that first person in line. She took a week off of vacation, tornado warnings, and she slept in a tent, and everyone was lined up behind her because she wanted to be that first person to meet Gaga. You know, here's something about one percenters. They're crazy sometimes. <laughs> they really are. And um, we see a lot of businesses who um, sometimes disregard these folks, because they seem a little weird. They love the brand sometimes more than the folks who work in the company themselves, right? So I think sometimes they may be uh, disregarded as being these crazy fanatics, um, but they're not. They're, they're our best customers. They're people like Amber Brown. You don't have to have a super sexy product. I mean, there are companies like Costco that have amazing one percenters. This is Ron Susi. And he is a giant Costco one percenter. He buys everything from his socks to his underwear to his eyeglasses from Costco. He and his wife, when they go on vacation, they have to go to the Costco. He loves it so much that his wife made him this shirt so that when someone says, ooh, I like your belt, he can say, ooh, I'm Costco man because I got it from Costco. Right? Are we have Costco fans in the crowd? Where's our Costco fans? Woo! We love Costco. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, not, that's not a pop star that he loves. It is a store, right? And so there are one percenters for many, many, many businesses and many organizations. And the idea is to recognize who they are and to acknowledge them. And then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what Gaga does. And you'll find more lessons in the book about how she engages one percenters. You know, I bet we have some one percenters in the crowd. So here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to think about a brand, a product, a commercial product that you absolutely love. Okay, it can't be Spring Hill Suites and not Marriott. But I want to know, like, think about something you tell everyone you know about. You buy it as a gift. Are you thinking of that thing? Okay, I, wa I want to hear what it is. So let's, let's go find some one percenters. All right. Who wants to share their story of being a one percenter? You do. Come on up. OK, who are you and where are you from? I'm Lori from Thatcher, Arizona. Woo! All right. Spanx. Spanx, ladies. Don't leave home without them. It's not Visa. 
It's your Spanx. Nobody wants to see this. Wait, did you see her grab the mic from me? She, couldn't, she wanted to tell you about the Spanx. And honey, you look good. You look good. You look amazing. That's awesome. Oh my goodness, Spanx. Okay, oh, we have one over here. Ooh, somebody wants to share. Can you beat the Spanx? <laughs> Who are you and where are you from? Uh, my name is Laurel Roll. I'm from York, Pennsylvania with High Hotels. I'm a Maxinista. I am yes. um, TJ Maxx. Oh, oh wait, Maxinista. Yes. Is that a thing? It's a thing. It is. Oh. Like a formal thing? Do you have like, are you a card carrying Maxinista? I find out when the um, delivery truck comes in to the store and find out when the new products come in. How do you know that? You just ask a clerk. Oh, well, you got the scoop. You know the 411. Yes, oh. the 411. It, every week, you're there. She's there every week. Every week. Wow, thank you. Max. Oh, wait, one more. She's got one more thing to say. Uh, Pat um, is at the Spring Hill Suites in New Jersey, and I was on my way to do a one-on-one -on -one with him, and I spilled coffee on my skirt, and I text my husband, and he found the nearest TJ Maxx for me to get a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> wait, this skirt? Oh, okay. Oh my God, I've learned something new. Maximista, I love it. Any other Maximistas? You'll have to connect afterwards. Wow, that's great. So you can see one percenters, they're crazy. I mean, they're crazy. She's going to the store, she's finding out when the things arrive. This is what one percenters do. And so I want you to think about where are your one percenters? Do you know who they are? Could you name them for your hotel? Do you see them often enough? Do you see them online? Do you see their TripAdvisor uh, reviews? So think about if you, if you are a one percenter and think about if that thing you loved, they just ignored you. Like how would that make you feel? So I think that, that's a question we need to think about. Are we recognizing them? Do we know where they are? Um, do we pay them attention? Um, the one percenters are our top customers, and so the idea here, like Gaga, is to really pay attention to who they are. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for sharing the story. That was amazing and awesome. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> but you know what's really interesting is that there are a lot of companies out there that are ignoring them. I just wanted to show you a little bit of research. This is from Forrester, um, and they were asking chief marketing officers last year, what are your top three marketing objectives? And you can see at the top, it was really all about new, new, new. I, I think they have like shiny new object syndrome or something. You can see it's about new customers, uh, new products, new awareness, 60% focusing on new customers. So let's compare that with current customers. You can see it's down to 30% now who are focused on retention of current customers. 26% on lifetime value and 26% on customer sat or advocacy. So why the disconnect here? You know, this, why the focus on just new? I mean, we certainly need new customers, but we all know, you've seen this research before, right? Five times cheaper to keep a current customer. We've done so much to keep them, to get them, but we don't do that much to keep them sometimes. And uh, not to throw an industry under the bus, but you know, those, those industries, those companies who kind of get you in and then just ignore the crap out of you. Your cable company, I don't want to name names, <laughs> but I live in Austin, Texas, and um, there's three letters, I won't say who they are, but if you read the Yelp reviews, I mean, they're just, people are angry. They have like one star and they use F-bombs. Like I mm, hate them, right? Because they get you in and then their customer service is terrible. And they're giving all these discounts, they're getting the new customers in and you're just, you just want your cable to work. And it, you know, and so it's very frustrating. So you see some industries are, which are all about getting in new customers but don't pay attention to current. And I think that is a giant problem. And I know you guys don't do that. I know you guys totally focus on um, service and style and all these amazing things to keep your customers. So kudos to you. That's amazing. Okay. So back to uh, Lady Gaga. This is Troy Carter. He is her manager. And, you know, when he was asked about why they connect with the diehards, he says, I think it's really important that we look at our diehards. He'd, he would rather have one million diehard customers than 54 million. You know, I talk to a lot of audience and social is the hot, hot thing. 
and everybody's trying to race to the top. How many Facebook fans do we have? How many Twitter followers do we have? And at the end of the day, it's so easy for someone to just like something. But what we are looking for are those loyal customers who stay with us, who tell everyone that they should come to our hotel. That's who we want. And Troy is saying, you know, for us to be successful, for Gaga to be successful, it's really about the long term and growing that loyalty. And that is the lesson, the top lesson, I think, that we can learn from Gaga.